Today we are talking about Differential Reinforcement, Chapter 22 in your Cooper book. So what is the definition of Differential Reinforcement? When implementing Differential Reinforcement, we're reinforcing one response class, which is usually the behavior we want to increase, while withholding reinforcement for another response class, which is the behavior we want to reduce. When dealing with reducing problem behavior, this involves reinforcing a behavior other than the problem behavior, and then reinforcing a reduced rate of the problem behavior. So here we have a diagram of differential reinforcement. You'll see that the establishing operation is that they're deprived of attention for a period of time. The SD or the Q is go play by yourself while I wash the dishes. Um, the behavior that we're trying to reduce would be the tantrums, right? So when the child exhibits the tantrum behavior, um, we're withholding praise for the tantrum behavior. But when the child plays appropriately with toys, we then deliver praise. So playing with toys occurs more often in the future um, when they've been deprived of attention for periods of time. And then tantrums occur less often in the future when the individual has been deprived of attention for periods of time. So the first type of differential reinforcement we're going to talk about is DRI. And DRI stands for Differential Reinforcement of Incompatible Behaviors. And this means we reinforce a behavior that cannot occur at the same time as a problem behavior, as in it's physically impossible, and then we withhold reinforcement for the problem behavior. So an example of an incompatible behavior would be a student sitting down at their desk versus standing up, right? It's physically impossible for them to be sitting and standing at the same time. And the next type of differential reinforcement we're going to talk about is DRA. And that stands for Differential Reinforcement of Alternative Behavior. And that means we're reinforcing occurrences of a desirable alternative to the problem behavior. And then we're withholding reinforcement for the problem behavior. And it's important to remember that DRA does not necessarily mean that the behavior is physically incompatible with the problem behavior. So remember our out of seat behavior? So incompatible behavior was that he was sitting down. An alternative behavior might be that I want the student to raise their hand to get up from their desk. And just a quick note on terminology. So when a reinforcer is a negative reinforcer, you might see DNRI, which is basically just differential reinforcement of a negative reinforcer of incompatible behaviors, and then DNRA, so negative reinforcement of alternative behaviors. And again, you're looking at <clears throat> behaviors that meet the escape or avoidance function. With DNRI, it's incompatible with the problem behavior, and DNRA, it would be the replacement behavior. So when we're looking at negative reinforcers, again, we're talking about escape avoidance functions. So DNRI might be, um, you know, what are two incompatible behaviors um, to get out of something, right? So again, it could be staying in their seat versus standing up. And then DNRA would be them requesting a break. And here are some guidelines for implementing DRI or DRA. The first is selecting the incompatible or alternative behavior. You want to choose a behavior that already exists in the learner's repertoire. It has to require equal or less effort than the problem behavior and has to be emitted at a rate that provides sufficient opportunities for reinforcement and is likely to be reinforced in the natural environment. So for example, if I want the student to functionally communicate, I have to make sure that I'm using uh, the type of communication that is already in their repertoire. Can they 
use words? Do they need to use um, gestures or a different type of communication device? Um, I want to make sure that this behavior requires less effort than the problem behavior. And when they exhibit that replacement behavior, I have to make sure that it's way more reinforcing than exhibiting the problem behavior. Um, and then it's also something that they will most likely come into contact with in their environment. So again, I have to reinforce the use of the functional communication. Another guideline is to select potent reinforcers that you can control. Um, you can identify these through a preference assessment, a functional behavior assessment. So the main point is that when you're coming up with the incompatible behavior or the alternative behavior, they have to meet the same function as the problem behavior. And make sure to reinforce the incompatible or alternative behaviors immediately and consistently. Um, again, withhold reinforcement for the problem behavior and then combine with other procedures. Then the next type of differential reinforcement is DRO. And that stands for differential reinforcement of other behaviors. It's also known as omission training. This means I deliver the reinforcer whenever the problem behavior has not occurred for a specific time. So again, omission of the problem behavior. I'm reinforcing them for not exhibiting the problem behavior. There are different types of DRO. The first one is the fixed interval DRO, or it might be noted as the FI DRO. Um, and this is basically the omission requirement is applied at the end of an interval, and the intervals are of equal duration. So first you would establish the interval, so maybe it's every minute and you would deliver reinforcement at the end of the interval if the problem behavior didn't occur at all during the interval. Um, if the problem behavior does occur, you would reset the interval. Then we have the variable interval DRO. And in this one, at the end of successive time, time intervals of variable and unpredictable durations, uh, the behavior must be omitted. So to apply this, you establish variable interval schedules. So it can be any time between like say three to five minutes. You deliver reinforcement at the end of the interval if the problem behavior did not occur at all during the interval. Um, and just like the previous one, the fixed interval, if the problem behavior occurs, you reset the interval. Then we have the fixed momentary DRO and the variable momentary DRO. And just like momentary time sampling, this is the absence of the behavior at the end of the interval, whether it's fixed or variable. So again, right at the end of that interval, if they are not omitting or if they are not exhibiting the behavior, you would reinforce them. If they exhibit it during the interval, the contingency is not in place. To apply this type of DRO, you would establish the interval, whether it be fixed or variable and you deliver reinforcement at the end of the interval if the problem of behavior is not occurring at the end of the interval. So the question is, what type of DRO should one use? So here are just some guidelines to help one choose which type to use. Again, it really depends on the individual and the behavior. Um, but interval DRO is more commonly used than momentary DRO. And again, that's when they omit the behavior for the whole interval. Interval is more effective for suppressing problem behaviors. So I'll often use it when I'm trying to reduce self-stimulatory behavior or self-injury. So I do not want them to exhibit that behavior for a certain amount of time. Um, and then I would reinforce them for the absence of that. Um, momentary may be used for maintaining reduced levels of problem behavior. And again, you think about the environment and the context, right? If you're a classroom teacher and you're having to monitor this DRO with, you know, 30 students, um, it might be more effective and you can still keep track of a behavior by using momentary. And of course, there are some guidelines for using DRO. So there are some limitations for using DRO. So remember, you're providing reinforcement if there is the absence of the target problem behavior. 
However, if another target behavior or problem behavior occurs, it could be reinforced, right? So let's say I'm, I want them to omit aggression. Um, so that means they could do anything else other than be aggressive, um, but maybe they're cursing. Right. But because a target is aggression, um, I'm limiting them for not being aggressive, but then they're getting reinforcement, even though they're using bad words. Right. Um, so I might need to shorten the interval or you can include that as part of the problem, def problem behavior definition. Right. So it's got to be the omission of aggression and of cursing. A limitation with momentary DROs is that you are delivering reinforcement at the end of an interval if the problem behavior is not present, but if they exhibited the behavior throughout the entire interval except for at the end of that interval, you're still delivering reinforcement, right? So some suggestions would be you just change to interval DRO um, or you could shorten the interval. It's also very important that you set the intervals at appropriate times, right? So you want to make sure that they will get reinforcement. You want to make sure that they're successful. So this is really going to depend on your baseline, right? So if my baseline is this um, learner exhibits this behavior, you know, every two minutes, right? I'm going to make sure that I'm sending the intervals less than two minutes to make sure that they can be successful. And then I would increase them. So I did have a patient uh, that exhibited behavior, you know, every minute. So our intervals had to start really short. And then as we went through the day, they increased. Um, and eventually, you know, she decreased the head banging behavior. And remember, just make sure you are not inadvertently reinforcing other undesirable behaviors. Right. So when you're setting the rules and the criteria, making sure you're covering all of the problem behaviors and making that a requirement. There are three ways to gradually increase the DRO interval. The three options are, one, you can increase by a constant duration of time, meaning every session I'm going to add a minute. Um, you can increase intervals proportionately. So every session I'm going to add 5% of the last time. Um, or you can increase based on the learner's performance. So I can say, you know, last session um, she was at five minutes and then you continue from there. The next type of differential reinforcement is DRL. That stands for differential reinforcement of low rates of responding or low rates of behavior. And we would use this to decrease the frequency of a behavior but not completely eliminate it altogether. So again, you can reinforce for less occurrences of blurting out, right? Particularly if they're exhibiting a large um, uh, frequency of that behavior and maybe you see it reduced by 50% but not completely zero but you would still like to reinforce them for that 50% reduction. For full session DRL reinforcements delivered at the end of the session if during the entire session the target behavior occurred equal to or fewer times than a predetermined criterion. So if I had a student that blurted out like 10 times in a class session I would reinforce them if you blurted it out 10 times or less or nine times or less during the whole class period. Interval DRL is similar, except that I'm dividing the whole class session into smaller intervals. And then at the end of each interval, if they meet the criterion, I would reinforce them. In space responding DRL, I deliver the reinforcer following an occurrence of behavior that is separated from a previous behavior at least a minimum amount of time, also known as IRT or inner response time. So instead of asking to go to the bathroom every five minutes, I might say, okay, now you need, you need to space that out and you can ask every 10 minutes. It's important to recognize the limitations for using a DRL. 
Um, one is that it's slow and it does not reduce the behavior quickly, nor does it re eliminate the behavior. So which is the most appropriate DRL procedure? So again, these are not rules, but just some guidelines to help one choose which one to use. Um, space responding is the only DRL procedure that delivers reinforcement immediately following response and maintains lower rates. Um, use full session and interval DRO when it's okay to have either no or low rates of the target behavior. And then space responding provides higher rates of reinforcement. And just like DRO, you're going to use your baseline data to guide um, selection of initial response or IRT limits. Um, and then you set a, at mean baseline or a little bit lower. And then make sure to gradually thin the DRL schedule. So for full session DRL, you're going to set new criterion based on the learner's current performance. Um, so again, based on the last session, you know, you would decrease the amount of times they're allowed to exhibit that behavior. Interval DRL, you would gradually decrease the number of responses per interval. And then space responding, you would adjust the IRT or the inner response time criterion based on their performance as well. And of course, you want to provide informational feedback to the learner, and this helps enhance effectiveness by helping them monitor their own performance.